Hello and welcome to another edition of Tobes Tries. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm not reviewing a food. I'm actually reviewing a video game accessory. Um, if you've watched my channel in the past, you've probably noticed this shelf of video games over here. And there's a whole big other shelf in that corner that is off camera that you can't see. But I love video games. Uh, I've been actively collecting video games for about the last three years. But I've been playing them pretty much my whole life. Uh, going back to like the Nintendo and Super Nintendo and Sega and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so a couple of years back actually, <laughs> I backed a product on Kickstarter. And it's from a company called Retro Fighters, and if you know anything about them, they made they make kind of um, more modern day looking controllers to retro systems. So I think their big first one was like the Retro Brawler 64 for the Nintendo 64, but they came out with one for the Sega Dreamcast, and I have it here, and we're going to unbox it and kind of take a look at it. So yeah, so this is how it came in the mail. Nice discreet brown box. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and open this up here and take a look at what is inside. So I have seen a few people post pictures and stuff about them having received theirs, but I haven't watched any other videos on it yet. Oh dang. So I'm very excited to take this out of the box and give it a little look. Alright, so there you go. It is the Striker DC Gamepad. And the DC standing for Dreamcast. Um, this box is really nice. This is a very nice box. Um, I have a lot of stuff that's in box. It's always nice to have it in box. And if the box is nice and looks good up on a shelf, then it's always a plus. Go ahead and get this out of the box, though. What's in the box? Oh, get it out. There we go. So yeah, so you have the nice box. On the back, it gives some specs and stuff on it. But uh, got a little piece of paper here. A little frequently asked questions card. Oh, that's cool. Comes with some, some little stickers, some retro fighter stickers. Those are very cool. A quick start guide, a little keychain with one of those little 8 bit guys, and the controller itself. And I have to say, it looks really nice. Um, so if you're not familiar with what the original Dreamcast controller looks like, I have one here. So there you have, like, this is the original Dreamcast controller. At the time, it was cool looking, I guess. It's really weird now because it only has the one joystick, like most controllers now would have a second joystick here. And of course it has a D-pad, some face buttons, a start button here. And the cool thing I always thought was that you can put in like a rumble pack, which I don't have a rumble pack right now, but then you have the, uh, the VMU or the virtual memory unit and that slides in there and it has that little screen that coincides with this window here. So when you're playing, this can show like different kinds of stuff, like maybe some stats or it can show like, you know, the game logo or something like that. But if you notice, it's got basically a whole other little controller or d-pad and some a and b buttons here and you for certain games you could have save files on here and then take them and like play little tamagotchi type games or something like that and then you could actually link them with these ports here to another vmu and you could have like little tamagotchi battles i don't know i never really got into that not a lot of people i knew back in the day had a dreamcast we had one, like my stepbrother had gotten one for his birthday, and we didn't actually have a VMU, so yeah, good times playing the same levels over and over again because just no way to save the game. 
Now if I can get this one out of the box. So there you have like a side-by-side -side comparison. This, the original, and this is the Striker DC, the Retro Fighters model. And right off the bat, I like the look of this as a modern like controller with kind of these little legs you can grab onto. Ooh. Oh, the D-pad feels amazing on this. So I love the Dreamcast. And I love the Dreamcast controller, but this D-pad is very mushy. This is like, you can't really see it, but this is a very hard plastic and it's kind of sharp on the edge. Not like going to cut you, but like long gameplay, especially if you're playing like a fighting game or something like this isn't very comfortable on the thumb. This has a much like cleaner feeling D-pad. Like it just feels like when you push it, you can feel like it's responding. And then this thumbstick is padded. Oh man. And then it has, of course, the two triggers that were on the original. It also has these bumper buttons, which I'm not entirely sure because the original did not have this. So I'm not sure what these would do, but we'll get some gameplays going and we'll figure some of this stuff out. And of course it has your standard X, Y, A, B face buttons here in the iconic colors. And it also has the pause button, the triangle pause button, and then the addition clear button and a turbo button. So not sure what the clear button does, but the turbo button, you would push this. And then instead of having to like rapidly smash on a button, you just be able to hold it down with the turbo button activated. Um, so it has the windowed view here so you can slide in your VMU. Um, yeah, sits in there real snug. It doesn't, it doesn't have this big arch on it so it sticks out a little bit but that's not a huge deal like whatever. Um, and then it has a second port here for like I said if you had a rumble pack which I don't but that would be another accessory you could plug in here. Um, of course it obviously has to have the same plug on the end to plug into the system but what I like about this and that I always thought was so weird about the Dreamcast controller you can see the cable comes out of the bottom of the controller on most controllers it will come out of the top but because you have these ports here they couldn't really get around that so what they did is they put a little like drop thing I don't know what you would call this it. like a little clip so that the uh, the cable can come out of the top it was a workable like it sufficed as a workaround but as you can see it doesn't actually hold it in there very well and a lot of times you're playing and it just ends up popping out and then dangling down which I sit close enough to my computer or my TV and my console that it's not a big deal but if you're sitting on the other side of the room it might be an issue um yeah so let's go ahead and put a couple games in and see just how the actual controller works all right also so i just unraveled the cable here it is significantly longer like i can't even stretch it all the way out whereas with the other one i feel like it's maybe half again is short so that's cool it's definitely a longer con controller cable so that's always nice and then when we plug in our controller here let's see if i can do this you can hear the beep which means the controller is on or the vmu and then there you can see just the little like graphic that displays so it's just telling you that a the vmu is in is plugged in and ready to go so just thought that was kind of cool i would comment on that all right, now for the games. Hey guys, so unfortunately I was unable to capture any gameplay footage. I think that has to do with my Pound HD link for the Dreamcast just not being compatible with my capture card. Um, it, it just wouldn't show, like it would show up on the TV, but it wouldn't show up in the capture software. So I'm not sure 
what the issue is there and for some reason the only other cable i have to hook my dreamcast up to the tv is rf because why not anyway um i went ahead and played a few games anyways i played a little bit of power stone i played a little bit of crazy taxi and of course some tony hawk pro skater 2 because hey who doesn't love tony hawk and um the controller is amazing feeling in my hands like it just it grips so well it feels way more like a modern controller as it should i mean that was their whole goal setting out to make this is a more modern feel to the controller the thumbstick is amazing it's so much better like just this small amount of like rubberized cushioning like it's not even like cushioned it's just rubberized it's so much easier on the thumb the d-pad it's just, it feels more responsive, like less mushy. Um, the triggers are the same, sort of. They're like, so they're analog triggers. So like you push it in a little bit and you go a little and then you push it in a lot and you go a lot and vice versa. Like you can slow down, you can fully brake. Um, in Crazy Taxi, I noticed that the bumpers did the same thing, but just without the analog to it. So like you push it and it's just like up all the way going, all the way stopping. The face buttons here, I have a great feel to them. Um, the turbo button, I use that in Power Stone, and it's exactly what I thought it would be. Just like any turbo button, you turn that on, and you hold the punch button, and you punch forever. You don't have to keep mashing the button. And then, of course, as soon as you turn it off, you push the punch button, you punch once, and you got to mash the button to keep punching. I do wish it had some sort of like indicator, like an LED or something, just to let you know that it was on or it was more tactile where it like would be in and then you push it again and it would pop out. It's a small complaint there, but overall, like nothing else really to complain about. Um, like I said, the cord on this is super long. I mean, longer than most, well, most modern controllers are wireless, but you know, more than like, a lot of controller cables have been in the past so that's great so you don't have to necessarily sit right up on the tv uh the vmu as you saw totally works lights up the only thing is that this part the controller part sticking up but again that's not a huge issue um yeah, overall, I really, really enjoy this controller, and I'm looking forward to playing a bunch more Dreamcast games with this controller. So, if you are interested in the Retro Fighter Striker DC, I'll leave a link to the, their website down below. Go ahead and check them out, and I believe that's kind of where we're going to end the video for today. A little bit different than what we normally do on this channel, don't worry. We'll get some sodas, we'll get some energy drinks, we'll get some candies going again soon, but I've been waiting on this controller for a long time. Everything that's going on in the world right now delayed it, so when it showed up earlier this week, I was super excited and I just wanted to do a little review on it. So thanks so much for watching, guys. If you're into retro games or you have retro games of your own, let me know down below what you think of the Dreamcast. Kind of a, a slept on console at the time, but definitely a great console still. Or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, guys, I'll uh, see you in the next video. Bye.